Hey everybody, Trevor Sikkim here. Another episode of Favorite Fits, taking a look at the best fits from TDN's latest mock draft over at thedraftnetwork.com. And, uh, you know, we got an easy one this week because it was my mock draft that was published on Mock Draft Monday. And so every pick's a favorite fit, right? I mean, like, it's my mock. It's perfect. Every single pick, you gotta love, okay? I mean, that's not the case. You, you guys saw the mock, the mock that came out earlier this week, and we know that there were some selections that some fan bases weren't big fans of. But I'm going to pat myself on the back a little bit with a couple of these favorite fits, and we're going to read them off. These are the replies uh, and the tweets from you guys in response to my mock draft that you really like. So we're going to start off with Ben, not Ben Solak, different Ben. There are other people in the world named Ben. I know, weird. He said, too good to be true for the Eagles. I can't even dream of this outcome. So... You know, when you get done writing a mock draft, you know there are going to be a couple of fan bases that love what you do. Just right off the bat, even before you publish it, you know that they're going to love it. I knew that was going to be the case for the Eagles because they were the big winners of day one in this latest mock draft that I have because they went ahead and picked J.C. Horn, the cornerback from South Carolina, at number 12 and then traded back into the first round, at the back end of the first round for Minnesota wide receiver Rashad Bateman. I mean, this is a dream come true, right? They get the cornerback that they need. They get some extra juice in the secondary, and then they get a wide receiver that I think not only has a lot of talent, but perfectly complements what they already have. They've got uh, Travis Fulgham to play on the outside as a bigger wide receiver. They've got Jalen Rager, who they hope brings that speed element. You can play Rashad Bateman everywhere. Play him on the line of scrimmage on the outside. Play him in the slot. I mean, his 2019 tape is absolutely fantastic. And so this would be a huge home run for the Eagles. I really wanted to do this exercise knowing that we often see teams trade back into the first round and the Philadelphia Eagles, for as much as they really need to turn around, perhaps they are that team to get aggressive if a certain player falls down the board. Next pick we got to talk about, New York Jets, because this is another selection that I really loved clicking this player's name and having it as a pairing for this team. It's at number 23 overall, and it's cornerback Caleb Farley. Jets fan, I just to say, love Farley to the Jets. Swing it for the fences. Hopefully Newsom or Horn do somehow fall, though. But I'm not so sure Horn's going to make it to you at number 23 if you're a Jets fan. You might be able to get Greg Newsom, although the Titans being at 22, I think that that's... Uh, they're certainly going to have Greg Newsom on their board. But Farley, he's the big wild card, right? Because this is a guy who was a top 12 type of talent in this draft class, at least I believe, at corner before he had that second back surgery. And now this makes it two that he's had in back-to-back -back years. And it's just not great. Farley came out and he said, that, hey, the doctors have cleared me to play for next season, which is great. Good for Farley. And, and I hope that somebody takes a chance on him early on in the first round because his talent is fantastic. But you just never know. Two back surgeries before you get in the NFL, it's kind of risky. But a team like the New York Jets, they can take this risk. You're taking Zach Wilson probably at number two overall. The other big knee that they have uh, is cornerback. And with edge rushers kind of starting to go in this draft, corner starting to get a little bit scarce, go swing for the fences. You've got a lot of draft picks over the next couple of years. And that's not to say you want to waste them or anything like that. But I don't think taking a chance on Farley is a waste by any means. If you could get what I believe was CB1 when healthy in this class at number 23, huge win for the Jets. Last but not least, we've got to talk about a team that I know very well, as my Twitter handle is Tampa Bay Trey. We've got to talk about the Tampa Bay Buccaneers at number 32. And speaking of a pick that just gave me a smile as I was able to click that name to this team, I gave them Landon Dickerson, the interior offensive lineman from Alabama. John had this one to say after. He said, love the Bucs pick. I've been thinking for a while just how perfect of a fit this would be to transition from Ryan Jensen to Landon Dickerson. So if you look at the Buccaneers right now, they're bringing back all five of their starters on their offensive line from the Super Bowl year, uh, from the Super Bowl line a year ago. Donovan Smith's playing left tackle, Ali Marpet's playing left guard, Ryan Jensen's at center, Alex Kapp is at right guard, and then Tristan Wirfs is at right tackle. But coming up next year, if you look to the future a little bit, Ryan Jensen's a free agent. He's over the age of 30 now. And Alex Kappa is also a free agent. So you got your center and your right guard that you probably have to resign. If you get Landon Dickerson, this is a huge win because not only is this great for 2021, because we know that it's very rare that your offensive line just stays healthy throughout the entire year. Landon Dickerson has the size and the skill set to play a lot of different positions on the offensive line, not just center, but also guard and even tackle. So you have him immediately on the bench as a swing kind of offensive lineman who could play whenever you need him to, wherever you need him to. But then going forward, he could have an instant starting spot if you don't want to spend a lot of big money on your center or your right guard who are hitting free agency next year. So I think that this not only works for a 2021 approach, but also 2022 and beyond. As long as the Bucs are okay taking him with his injury history, Landon Dickerson to Tampa at the back end of the first round could be one of the best picks to make. 
All right, that's enough patting myself on the back here with this latest mock draft using you guys' as tweets. Appreciate all of the reads, both positive and negative replies. I think it's all good. It's good discussions this time of year. People definitely have who they they want as their main targets for their teams. If you haven't checked out the mock draft yet, please do so. It's not just round one either. I got rounds two and round three coming up throughout the week. You can see that over at thedraftnetwork.com. Mm-hmm.